This is a video about my project to digitize and restore 8mm film using a 4K raw digital process. Using a modified projector, I am scanning film frame by frame and processing the raw images in software to get a remastered video. Now, commercial devices exist for this sort of thing, but I wanted to try my own take, see how fast I could get it running, and have a lossless editing process. This project has been a fair bit of work, but it's also been pretty fun. Using this projector, I've connected my own stepper motor, a 12 volt automotive LED, put in my own camera, a remote trigger shutter, and a couple of Arduinos to power and synchronize the whole thing. And it's a bit of a mess in the back. I'm working on that, <laughs> but the front looks pretty good. And I have to say, I'm really happy with the results I've got so far. This is how I did it. This project has a lot of moving parts, and I mean that literally, so I thought it would make sense to start with one. I decided to use a stepper motor to drive the projector because I can very finely control the speed and do things like acceleration and deceleration. So using an Arduino uh, and a handy library with a TB6600 controller, I can drive the motor at variable speed and uh, that enables me to run it as fast or slow as I want. So when I got the stepper motor running, I just did a quick test alongside the projector, holding it against the pulley here. And it works great. The stepper motor's got no shortage of torque. So that was really good to be able to test. So the next step was to take the stepper motor and work in the variable speed portion. So here I've got a 10K um, pot, a potentiometer, and that's connected to the Arduino. And with Arduino, the analog inputs go from you know zero to 1023. So using that value, I just map that to a, a zero to 2500. I think it's RPM or speed value um, for this um, stepper motor library. And it works great. So I took the motor and put it on an iPhone stand and then hooked it up to the projector and here we are. Yeah, we're running very smoothly. Um, really good sort of first test. It does vibrate a fair bit when you get down to the lower uh, speeds. It, stepper motors buzz a fair bit. Um, so you want to watch out for that if you do this. But uh, yeah, again, it seemed like it was pretty reliable. I definitely needed something to hold this the stepper motor down. And seeing this running with film, running through it with my stepper motor in action, that's that's pretty cool. It felt it felt good to see that. The next part of the project that made sense was to widen the film gate um, on the projector. So the film gate is kind of where the magic happens. The film passes through this little window and then the light comes from behind and then it normally gets projected onto a wall or screen or what have you. And in my case, I wanted to expose more of that film passing by. And so I opened up uh, the film gate and from the back side, there is this little metal and glass window that was attached, like a lens. Or, I don't know exactly what it is. And I wanted to remove that. So two small screws um, took that out very easy. And then underneath there's this sort of uh, size selector. So the frame uh, for eight versus super eight is slightly different. And I wanted to remove that entirely. So I removed the, the lever and then snipped that metal bit, moved it out of the way, opened up the entire frame and then had the motor and just threw on a quick test with the LED, uh, LED lighting and my camera. I've got the film going through it now and it really looks nice. I can see the full sprocket holes going by, um, a full width frame and like one and a half height of frame as well. And the early results from this, just taking stills, look fantastic. So very happy with how that's worked out. The next change was to remove the film shutter from the projector. Now the film shutter has these sort of fan blades and they hide the film while it's being pulled between frames when the projector is running normally. 18 frames a second for Super 8 film. Now for this project, I don't need that. I don't need stuff blocking the film gate. So I separated these. I realized there's a plastic part and a metal part and I just got some tin snips and cut those fan blades right off. And I left the metal, I'd say a good piece of that metal sort of wheel in there. There was some stuff behind that I didn't want to mess up. So once I had what I called the drive shaft sort of cleared out, the next thing was to attach my stepper motor. 
So there's this really nice looking 80 volt DC motor that the projector had, and I felt a little bad, but I took it out, uh, took it apart. It's a really neat piece of machinery. And then you see here previously, I had the stepper motor on the iPhone stand and uh, the positioning is nice. It worked out pretty well. I took my stepper motor and I mounted it on the frame of the original motor. It wouldn't fit inside, so I just put it on an edge. And I found that that distance was okay. There's a particular wheel that I put on the end of this. It is a 31 by 15 by five millimeter silver aluminum alloy V-shaped groove pulley for motor shaft. There you go. So I've got a working motor. I've cleared the drive shaft. The next thing now is the lighting. And I decided to go with an LED light and then a ping pong ball for a diffuser. So the ping pong ball, I just used some simple drill tools and by hand just bored out a hole in the top. Soldered two ends, two wires onto the ends of the LED. You notice it has a heat sink. These get hot um, and they put out a lot of light. This is, I think, 330 lumens. 110 degrees Fahrenheit, so toasty, but probably not gonna set anything on fire. The original lamp here, which you can see, and I don't know if they're just traditional bulbs or whatever, they get hot. If you have film and it's not moving, it'll burn the film. It'll burn right through the film. So you, you can't use the original projector bulbs. You gotta use LED. So I cut the ping pong ball in half, glued it in place, and then I was looking for some way to have to mount this thing and I got a, I was in my kitchen so I grabbed this sort of binder clip and took the metal bits out bent them a little bit and put them around the frame of the LED uh, light and then I had this cheese grater and it comes with this plastic cover thing and I was looking around for something to fit this thing and I thought you know I actually think this might work and lo and behold it, it fit really well so I slapped this together in my kitchen so here I've got this piece that is height adjustable and I can just put it in the place of where the original bulb, uh, projector bulb went and there we go. And it worked really well. After this, I've got my light, I've got my motor. The next thing is the camera trigger. So I need some way for the projector to say, hey, it's time to uh, take a picture. And so my plan was to put something on the drive shaft that would set this off. So on the right here, you see uh, the original sort of prototype, uh, kind of a mess. And then on the left is the updated version once I tightened up all the wiring. So I've in prototyping, I've got the Arduino, variable speed control, the infrared gate, uh, whatever, sensor, and the LED light. And initially my plan was to only turn on the LED, uh, the light, when the gate gets triggered. And then I thought, no, 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 that's going to be inconsistent. Now the camera remote shutter is really simple. It's just three wires, at least for this Sony model. You connect all three wires together, you get a photo. Now I've got a motor, I've got the LED light, and I've got the infrared gate sensor. And here's kind of a real mess, but it's working. I had to fix up that bulb later too, but it, it worked, it's great. Very happy with that. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the camera setup. And basically there's a tripod little mount here, and then there's a certain kind of dance to just lining up the camera. Um, with the projector, getting the focus, getting the aperture, all those things. When you line it up and things work, you get some pretty good results. So as you can see, I'm pretty happy with the front. It looks pretty tidy compared to the back. That's all for now. This is part one. I've got a lot more. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.